It is April the 9th, 2022, and we are at the company Architect Line in Hungary. And we're just going to do a quick update on the cherry tree production. And so we have Peter Kellerman, the owner of Bella, and Carlos Ruiz. And so Peter is just going to give us a quick update on the basics of when the trees were transplanted and uh, give us some background information. Okay, so uh, these uh, are uh, sweet cherry plants on uh, rootstock, which is Gisela 5. Uh, the trees were planted as a micrografted uh, plant uh, in April uh, 2020. So actually this is uh, the third leaf of the plant, but in April they were like a seedling of uh, 20 centimeters uh, tall. So all the growth happened in the season of 2020 and 2021. The plants are growing in uh, pots, which are air pots. They are uh, uh, a little bit special about uh, the, the management of the root growth. We, we avoid with the pot the circular growth of the roots in the pot. Um, the pot, the, the substrate is uh, pure cocoa peat. Uh, we have no other uh, uh, material inside. Uh, and um, we are uh, using uh, four drippers on each of them to irrigate. We have uh, an irrigation computer and uh, a fertigation system behind for the feeding and the irrigation of the plants. And uh, more or less that's it. The pruning system, as you can see, is uh, quite uh, unusual. We call it a pergola. Uh, where we are applying a technique of uh, breaking branches and in this case in the pergola it's also breaking uh, the trunk of the tree to, uh, to a trellis system so at the end a little bit the orchard looks like uh, a table grape orchard where all the, all the fruiting wood is on the same level and uh, we are planning to pick uh, fruits from these uh, in the coming season. So Peter, how much earlier did you see the flowering inside here compared to outdoors? Uh, I asked Bela about the start of the flowering. Yeah, so we had, uh, so right now we are taking this video uh, on the 9th of April, so here inside the the flowering started in the beginning of March, first days of March. There was a little difference between varieties. 95% of the trees inside this house are Nimba variety. We have a few tiers of some other varieties and on and some of those varieties are low chill. For example, the Royal Tioga is a very low chill variety, so we see even a, much, a little earlier flowering, but generally speaking, this season we advanced the flowering time by four or five weeks of time. Now over here you've got a heating system. Yeah, but so so about the heating, uh, we we didn't heat because of advancing. So the heating system that is installed in this house is uh, is for um, frost prevention. So all the start up of the plants and all the heat accumulation is just done by closing the travel completely both on the roof vent and on the side vents which is happening in the beginning of january so when you think of the key lessons learned so far because this is really the first season where you've had flowering you're getting a chance to see how the plants developing um, what were the key lessons that you learned that um, need to be looked at differently Okay, so uh, one of the, so start with good things. So good things is that growing the trees in pots when you want to be early is a benefit because your root zone temperature will increase with the air temperature in house. So this was one lesson about getting early that we, we decided in, in a good way that we are in pots. The other lessons learned, which is related to the pots as well, is that it is very difficult to irrigate in the beginning of the season when uh, actually the plant uh, is not having leaves, uh, is not transpirating. So when we check our weight scales of losing water, we don't see a lose of water. 
and this might gave you the idea of not to irrigate but it's probably a mistake so another lesson learned is that uh, that uh, pre-leaf uh, period of growing uh, needs a special uh, attitude towards irrigation in order that you keep up uh, a good uh, a good structure of nutrients and pH levels and DC levels in the growing media in the substrate yeah. um, most likely I think this is what we take uh, home with us till now and there will be plenty of other challenges to come yeah we've had some very uh, fantastic discussions about just trying to understand the difference between optimizing transpiration and water supply um, when we're in the greenhouse environment we're giving the plant light and warmer temperatures but we're not losing as much water so making sure how to move the nutrients through the tree early in the season is going to become more critical and um, the second part the the broken stem techniques looks really interesting because it's getting you a greater plant canopy and easier for harvesting the challenge is it's going to be more critical to manage the water stress because when we break the stems we're losing the capacity to move the same amount of water through the through the stem yeah i i, I think uh obviously all this needs to be considered uh, but uh, in, in my opinion uh, we look this is the first season when we broken the branches and uh until now i think uh, what we can see that uh, the, the, on the broken branches when they are strong enough and they are good vegetative buds to the bottom of the branch you can see already that new shoot growth started already there new shoot growth also starting more in more distance compared to that point so as as, as far as i'm concerned uh, this has an effect on the on the on the water uh, let's say uh, uptake speed after that point but it looks to be enough what we have so you need to be careful but uh, but I think that uh, or or in my opinion our challenges are, uh, are related to the evapotranspiration so management of the evapotranspiration is really critical in this house but some of the issues that we faced till now, in my opinion, are more irrigation related. Obviously, evapotranspiration and irrigation walk hand in hand, but in terms of managing the substrate, this is, this is what was our key challenge and, and is causing a little problems here and there to us. But, but I believe that it looks very interesting, but it, it seems to be that even with keeping up 25% of the of the canopy diameter we look to have enough uh, capacity of water because growth happening so if there would be a water stress here we would see stunted growth starting later mm -hmm. and all this but obviously we will check always the branches all the season so if we will still see some nutritional imbalance or some symptoms of water stress then it will give us an idea of how oh, this is influencing us. Yeah, and I think when I was talking about transpiration, it's more that right now we could be dealing in periods of too low of transpiration because we're trying to move all the nutrients through. Later on in the season, it'll be excessive right, transpiration. So there's an optimal range and we're trying to figure out how do we make sure it's high enough to get our distribution and not too high later on in the season. Yeah. No, that's fantastic, Peter. Thank you very much for the update. Welcome.